Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Seymour Micro Program Quick Start. This will demonstrate how to quickly get your Seymour Micro Program up and communicating to your Programmable Logic Controller or PLC. The general steps involved with the Human Machine Interface or HMI program will include program development, ladder logic, and HMI program development. We will be breaking the HMI program development into program purpose, tag import, HMI programming, simulation, and testing. So detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what is a HMI software program? Now a human machine interface or HMI software program gives operators a way to manage machines. Interaction through a graphical user interface or GUI that facilitates information exchange. A well-designed HMI system does more than just present control functions and information. It provides an operator with active functions to perform feedback on the results of those actions and information on the system's performance. So the first thing that we'll do is go look at the program development in the ladder logic. And in our case here, we're gonna be using the click programming software, which we have right here. And we are currently communicating online. We can just hit the status and you can see that. Now, um, what we're gonna do is use a start stop circuit uh, programmed with a timer. And the start stop uh, can be controlled via the HMI or PLC inputs. And the output when activated will then set a timer. Once the timer times out, this will reset the stop and or stop the circuit. And the timer set value, SV, can be changed via the HMI display. So here we have our program here. What you'll see is that we have our input here coming from our physical input, which just basically turns or sets the output on right here. Or we have an HMI start coming from C1, which we uh, turn also can set the output Y1 on. Then we have our stop, which is uh, input number two or X2 on our PLC, or we have C2 on our HMI that will actually stop the circuit, or we have the resultant timer when it times up, will start, stop the output. Now, when the output is on, our timer starts, and you can see that our timer set value is coming from DS1, and our, our present value, okay, so the set value, SV, or our present value, PV, is coming from DT1. So that tells us what our current timer is or timed out. You'll notice here that my units is in milliseconds. So that's what we want to display. So that is the entire program right here. And that's exactly what we want to do here. So what we'll do first thing is to click um, or export our tags. You'll see that we're using an HMI tag right here, C1. You'll notice that we cannot use a X1 because that's what the PLC is controlling. So we need an inter internal tag, and which is what we, we brought up on the C1 and C2. Then on the DS1, th these are internal memory areas and we can write to those and we can read from our, our timer present value. So again, we gotta make sure that our HMI is able to communicate and get this information out. So let's, uh, we'll go file. We're gonna do export, and we're gonna export the uh, nicknames of everything that we've used in this controller so that it'll be available to us in our HMI. So we'll do export names, and we're just gonna call it the uh, quick start like we have here already. We'll just hit save, we'll replace it. As you see, we've done this before. So as soon as we uh, export those, now all of our settings for all of these in individual I.O. are all set for us to use in our HMI. Now you can note that um, program development is usually the first thing I, I would do when we're um, developing an HMI program. So you want to make sure that you, you have all your inputs and outputs that are available to you to program your HMI. So. Now the other thing we have to watch out for or look for on our PLC is we will actually go into our um, setup 
and then look at our COM port setting because we're going to be using our um, Ethernet port in order to communicate to this uh, PLC. So we'll just hit setup on port number one, which is our Ethernet port. And you will see that we have it set for a static IP and we need a static IP in order to make sure that we have that same um, uh, device there at the same time all the time. So we're using IP address of 192.168.1.230. We have a subnet mask, which then must mask, mask, or match everything else you're using in that network. And then we have a gateway that allows this unit to connect down to the internet, which we're not using right now, but we'll set it anyway. And so we have to remember this 192.168.1.230. So we can close that down. So that is our PLC program and we're all set to go. So now let's um, look at our um, Seymour micro program setup. And we'll just call that up. There we go. Now, here are some quick development tips to keep in mind for your HMI program. Now, make screen simple to use and follow. And the more intuitive the screen is, the easier the operators to understand. So when things go wrong, the operator's excited, critical information should be readily available and easy to read at a glance. Also remember the units of measure should be displayed. Make the values displayed obvious to the operator, RPM, seconds, meters per minute, or any other unit that may, may or should be displayed with the values. And do not put too much information on one screen. Logically break down the and organize the information for the operator. Solicit, 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 uh, ask the operators or solicit, solicit the information from them to include the organization and control. The operators become part of the solution so they'll own it. And do not have screens buried too deeply. I like to ensure that the information is buried more than three layers or sections before the information required is displayed. And usually that information is nice to know but not critical for the operation. The critical stuff would always be um, present for the operator and develop a color code for the screen and keep it consistent. Green is good or go, red is bad or stop. The operator looking for the screen should know instantly the information based on the color. So here we go. And what we'll do is the first thing we will do is start up our start project. This will automatically pop up once you start up the program micro. And what we will do is select our data type um, and we're using a EA3T4CL and then we can select our protocol. Our protocol will be the automation direct click and we're going to use the Ethernet because we know the IP address. So our protocol setup will be right here and we will type in that same number. So 123. So that is the same one that we just looked at in the PLC. We'll hit OK. And now here is our new project. And we can give this project a name. And we'll just call it uh, our quick start. hit OK. And now here is our program ready to go. Now the first thing that I'd like to do is ensure that we see the entire screen that we're programming at once. So we'll go view and then we'll go zoom and we'll go 100%. So this is the size of the screen that I'm actually programming as 100%. So it'll look exactly like this uh, when we uh, download it to the controller. The uh, next thing we'll do is um, take a look at our grid lines. And what I'd like to do is view, and we'll go grid size or, or display grid. So there's my grid. And the one of the more important things is we go view, and then we'll snap objects to grid. This way it'll help align things on our screen and make them more readily available and easy to um, align everything and mix look nice. 
Next, what we'll do is take those tags that we exported from our PLC and we'll import it here. So file, import, um, and then we want uh, tag name database. And what we're going to do is select that same um, CSV file that we, we saved before. It will actually ask us, see it's coming from a click. And then it will ask us our driver. And we're going to go to DEV001, which is the device driver to that click that we just set up when we did the startup. We'll hit import. And there we go. So it's a couple of things that says unable add, but it's already there. So let's hit cancel. And if we want to see those, we can hit database, tag name database. And here's all of my tags, or we can just look at the DEV ones and you can see my input start, stop, I output. So that's already there that now I can use within my program. So now we can get into um, our actual program itself and our Seymour micro program will only have one screen. A start and stop push button will control the output one indicating light and the timer one set value and present value will be displayed on the screen and the set value will have to be have the ability to change um, with the screen. So let's take a look at our start button. So if we go over here, we'll take a look at our um, push button right here and with our push button we can then select it onto our screen and we have our parameters here so we're going to hit uh, our off it's going to be just we'll just say start our on will be start our tag name is going to be our hmi start Okay, and our object style, we're going to have a momentary on. This means as they hit the button on the screen, the corresponding bit in the PLC will then turn on. And that's what the, that's what the operation we actually want is going to be. So we'll just hit OK there. And now we can um, position this on our screen where we want it to appear. Next, what we'll do is we'll create our stop button. So what we can do is we can just copy this one and we can paste it. And then we can go into the information on the screen and we'll just hit stop on this one. And instead of being a background color of uh, green, let's make that red. Once again, we have to change our HMI tag. Right now it's start. And we will change that to the stop. Okay. And you notice here we can actually simulate that. So there's what it's going to look like when it's off. When a person hits it, it turns on, it'll show them the stop. There we go. Next, what we'll do is we will do an indication light. And our indication light, we can actually call up our parts. And there's our parts list right here. So as we hit the indication light, we can determine which uh, type of uh, part that we want here. And let's just do a, just a normal one here. And what we'll do is just put our off text, I'll put one off, and again, we'll just copy that, paste that, and we'll just put on. When it's off, it's going to be off like that. When it's on, it's going to be green. So that looks, that looks good. And now what we'll do is select our tag. There's our output one. So we'll hit OK and OK again. And now we can resize this to 
how we want to look on our screen. So we'll just make it like this. Move it up a little. And that looks pretty good. So we'll leave it just like that. Okay. Next, what we have to do is uh, look at the, uh, the information coming from our timer. And this would be our present value of our timer. So on our present value, we want a numeric display. So we'll just look down the, the uh, information here. And what we'll see is once we have the numeric display, there's our numeric display right here for under our indicators. And we will use a sample three here. That looks pretty good. We'll pull this on, pull this over. And the first thing we'll do is we will put in our uh, value here, our data type. Uh, We're going to put in, let's see, a value of four or five decimals and or five total digits. And three of those is are going to be decimals because we're dealing in milliseconds within our timer. So our prefix here, we're going to put in the value of, of uh, PV or present value, PV and colon and a space. Then on our suffix, we leave a space and then M seconds for milliseconds. And we will actually leave the, um, the leaving spaces here as our justification. Then we'll look uh, for our tag display. And at tag display, we'll again look at just the um, device names. We will look down here. And we'll look at timer set value and present value. So we'll select the timer present value and hit OK. That brings back the present value. You notice that because it's signed decimal, it automatically assigns what that is. So again, we don't have to worry about um, information going back and forth of, of what those characters represent in our memory. It automatically realizes this when we import those tags. The other thing we'll do is change the font to make this a little bit bigger so the operator can see that. And that font size, let's go classic font and we'll go 16 by 32. Hit OK. Again, we'll see what this looks like. Hit OK here. And now here is my information. So as we move it around, you can see that looks pretty good. And we'll leave it right about there. Next, what we'll do is we will actually do the numeric uh, enter. So we need to put an entry in there to actually put that on there. So let's do numeric entry, select it. Again, we'll look at sample three to make it look consistent on the screen here. And what we will do is put in Again, our font, we had our font at 16 by 32. And our text color, let's make that red for our set value. And then you'll notice that we can uh, put in the data entry and the data display is going to be my set value or DS1, hit okay. My prefix, we'll put an SV now, colon, space, and then our suffix or the ending will be space M seconds for milliseconds. And then we'll just hit, uh, oh, our number of digits, we have five with three decimals. And once again, we can size this to match what our present value is. So you can see that snap the grid really works uh, well. And you also notice that my uh, display object, when it pops up, will be style one, which will pop up with a digital 
uh, screen, which we can actually change those values. Okay. So that is my program. We hit save. There we go. And now the next thing we can do is actually simulate this uh, program. Now, Simulator is used to closely display what your screen will look like. Functions of the screen can be manually done to simulate the PLC logic. Now remember, there's no communication between um, the PLC at this point and the screen. It's just purely to make it sure it looks the way you want it to look. So let's do the simulation. And there's what my screen is going to look like here. You can see that I have that basically two windows. So I hit the start, you will see that start turn on. And when I let go, it turns off. And again, it's green. And now if my PLC turns my output on, then I can actually turn it on here. And you can see it turns green. For my uh, timer uh, set value, if we had to value uh, 1200, hit enter, you can see it appears on there. So 1200 represents 1 1.2 milliseconds. Or, sorry, it should be 1.2 seconds. The, end, the entry is milliseconds. So we can actually change that around, but it's fine for now, you, you get the idea. And then our display, as our display goes up, we can hit uh, a value in here and it'll actually display what it is. So that looks like everything's working okay. So, and that's what gives you a graphical information here. So it's a very nice uh, package. So let's exit out of this. And the next thing we'll do is actually send this information down to our hardware. There we go. So let's actually take a look at our hardware that we have here and here we go and you will see that we have our click plus plc right here the one that we've already programmed the, the information for um, and we can communicate wi-fi or we can communicate ethernet we're actually doing ethernet right now because the screens uh, send a lot of information back and forth and that's critical i would always recommend that we actually use a physical hardware to actually communicate to those screens. Then we have our actual screen itself. And this is a EA3 T4CL. So we are communicating ethernet to it. And when we first power it up, you'll see that there's no information, no memory. So it looks like this, it brings up the setup screen. So what we'll do is we will actually uh, transfer our program. So let's say ethernet and we can browse and there's our screen right there. And then we can just hit transfer. What this is going to do is transfer our program over to our controller. And once it's there, which is okay here, we are now running our program in our screen or on our screen itself. Now let's go back and we can call up our click PLC and we can monitor it at the same time. We'll just move this over and move this over a bit here. And let's, uh, first of all, we can start the unit and stop. So something's not quite right here. So let's, uh, uh, take a look now and if we hit the start You see the information is pumping or jumping around that is because you'll notice that my timer value is actually zero So it's actually actually resetting all the time. So the first thing we need to do is actually set our time value we'll Set it and let's go five seconds Hit enter So now we have five seconds on there Let's hit start and the timer goes on. You can see now it's timing up. After five seconds, it'll actually turn back off again. Or else we hit start and then stop. So that seems to be working well. In the 
software we can also if we were to uh, we can also monitor this and I'll monitor data and see what's actually happening so very simple but you have to be well organized to get know exactly what you want when you're programming an HMI so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button below if you have any questions about the video please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it if you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.